so thanks, great to see you. Now the first poem is called Remembrance Season, which is what this season is for me, because we have Remembrance Day um, coming up, and we've had, we have, there's a day in France where we go to visit our graves, our family graves, that mm -hmm. was recently, I think it was the 2nd of November, and I have a lot of family birthdays, Claudine's birthday today, and her mother's birthday yesterday, so that's my late um, mother-in-law, uh, which is also um, Guy Fawkes Day, remember, remember, 5th of November. I put that into the poem, but call it my mother-in-law's birthday. So it's just to set the scene for this time of year, remembrance season, uh, where I have a lot of personal uh, births, birthdays, you know, family birthdays, and death days, and just to set the scene as a sort of theme for the first few poems, re Remembrance Season. Remembrance Season. As is customary on All Souls Day, we visited family graves. We bought some flowers and laid them down while remembering some of the special things loved ones had said and done. We remembered how two of them had met and the circumstances that led them to build their beautiful house. And we marvelled how so many great things decorated their lives. Remember, remember the 5th of November, my late mother-in-law's birthday. Remember, remember family days, marriage anniversaries and remembrance day. What flowers are you going to buy? And what thoughts are you going to entertain, either metaphorically or in person, on the grave of a loved one during remembrance season? Thank you. So the next poem is called A Hug of Love. And I like to see a, li a lifetime, perhaps as a garden. So, and um, I think of a birth as like a very secret garden, you know, something mysterious, beautiful. And then death in our family is associated with a lily pond. And then in the garden, there, there are bright spots, like, for example, where a mother might first hold her baby, it would be like a, a rose bed, you know, a flower bed. And perhaps there would be a type of, um, there might be a wedding, where sometimes the gardens are made beautiful for the wedding. And in this poem, the, the, the idea of the wedding comes up again in um, a, a type of mystical sense. So, because we have these inner gardens, but we also have a sort of mystical wedding, you know. So that comes into it. A hug of love. Our lifetimes are filled with laughter and punctuated by hugs of love. Our births are like secret gardens, and our goodbyes are like lily ponds. Harvest time and springtime sowing dictate our workaday lives, and every now and then our gardens are decked out for weddings. A mother kissing her baby stands out for us like a flower bed with roses, and a grown man returning that blessing many years later, is like finding a sacred garden. In my heart, I live in a country cottage, where much of the work I do in the garden seems to be in preparation for a wedding. Today, as I sat on the garden bench, I thought about the wedding guests arriving, and I imagined the bride and bridegroom walking along flowery paths where one day their children will play. Then just as they turned to kiss, I was awoken from my reverie by your arrival on my bench and your hand in mine. And then after getting up and walking by roses, we shared a hug of love. So, still in the theme of remembrance season, 
This next one is about my marriage day. Uh, and then it goes on. Um, and it's also about asking the question, where were our inner children? Where was my inner child when I got married? And this sort of question starts off. And how, how is it now, now that I'm um, old enough to be a grandfather? Yeah. So it's called Two Children of the Universe. Two Children of the Universe. Where was her inner child when she walked up the aisle? And where was his when he said, I will? Were they running about or playing hide and seek between the pews? Or were they playing kiss chase with everyone in the church? Her heart sang about love and beauty when she walked up the aisle. And his heart sang to him something but he wasn't sure what it was. And somehow they kept together and never forgot how to play, or that at their core they were two children of the universe. Now when he acts the grandfather, he is surprised by the truths he hears, when he gives playful voices to toys for the young children. And now she is like a grandmother, and forever surprised by the beauty around her, and she puts some of it in a vase. So this is about, this is really about Claudine as well, whose birthday it is today. Uh, she died just over three years ago, so she would be 62 today. And it's called In Your Mother Tongue. In your mother tongue. You looked after your child when he was in your womb, and you gave him the best food you could. We made a prayer of hope for him, and you wrote it out and put it in your book. You looked after your child after he was born, and made up songs for him in your mother tongue. And then we took him out into the garden to see the trees and the flowers. You looked after your child throughout your life, listening to him and giving him advice after consulting your heart and seeking angelic help. You gave him the best that you could and you still look after your child and I am in awe of the love that you have shared with him and continue to share with us all. Mm -hmm. Now the next one is about myself and my mother. Um, so here it goes. It's called A Loving Bond. The heartbeat of your child and your heartbeat were once one, and only gradually did that change, after your baby was born. When the patter of my tiny bare feet rung in your ears, you always listened out for it and felt joy each time it reappeared. And then as my tiny feet grew big, you taught yourself to pray and trust. You sang to the eagle, please look after my child in the mountains. You sang to the dolphins, please look after my child at sea. And you prayed to God, please look after my child forever for me. The heartbeat of your child and your heartbeat were once one. And we know that you and I, my mother, are still connected by a loving bond. Mm. And on the family theme, this is, I remember my son pulling out all the books from the bookshelf. 
and being in a nest of books on the floor and thoroughly enjoying it, making a mess. This is called Putting the Books Back. Putting the Books Back. We think books should be on a shelf, but our baby laughs as they fall while sitting there in a nest of books on the floor. Our children seem to like kicking through our flotsam and jetsam, and when they stir things up, they aerate our soil for our seeds of love. Now we are putting the books back and trying to make a game of it, saying things like, Look, the little birds are flying back into the tree. Our children seem to like playing along with imagination. And I'm smiling in gratitude as our baby beams from his perch in paradise and hands a book to me. So the next one is called the order of arrival. And for some people, the order of arrival in a family is important. And the whole book's written about it. I'm the third. Mm. So I have brother, sister, and I'm the third, and I have a younger brother. And I'm saying in this poem that sequencing and the order of arrival are not quite so important um, when we see things in a loving way. So it's called, uh, yeah, the order of arrival. When you got up, the sun started to rise. Well, that's no surprise. You are such an early riser. When you walked by, everyone smiled. And who f smiled first doesn't matter. Some things go together, like you and me and flowers. And the order of arrival in a loving family doesn't matter. When you looked up, the sun peeped through. Well, that's no surprise. You live in the flow. When you walked past, you walked past flowers. Well, that's what happens when you let the grasses grow. Some things go together, like smiles and people and summer. And the order of arrival in a loving family doesn't matter. Never really forgot you. When love and beauty return, you put a hand to your heart and say, thank goodness for that. Then you thank your cat for staying with you while you seem to be away. And you make a beeline for the garden and say, how did I get by? How did I forget you? Something in my heart never really forgot you. When pain and discomfort are around, I put a hand to my forehead and say, this too will pass. And when it passes, I thank my cat for staying with me while I seemed to be away. And I make a beeline for you and say, how did I get by? How did I forget you? Something in my heart never really forgot you. And the, the last one in this little part of the evening, which is about remembrance, is what I wrote for my son just after his mother died. And we were um, at, the, at the graveyard and um, I was thinking how would I want to be remembered by him if I was next. And it's called Remember My Arm Around You. <clears throat> Remember My Arm Around You. Remember my arm around you, remember me smiling at you, remember my kiss, and when I am missed, remember my arm around you. Remember how I joined in with your song, remember this when I am gone, remember this and if it helps you, remember my arm around you. When I am not here, may you be in good cheer, and remember my arm around you. Okay, so, so that
came from my first book, which was written in 2020. Uh, and the next book was written in 2021, Heart Words 2. And then this year, I brought out this book, Heart Words 3. And ten of the poems from this book have been chosen by my host. Thank you. And I will read them. Okay. The first one is called Golden Pathway. And when we rise, we, when we raise our vibration and our frequency, we see things that um, we might not otherwise see. So that theme comes into this book, through this poem. And the other theme that comes in is that when we uh, find this peace or um, we sometimes become more whole and lost parts of ourselves are incorporated into you know, a lost child or a lost parts of us that we've lost get incorporated. So these two themes come into this uh, poem. The Golden Pathway. The difference between seeing and not seeing the doorway between the trees is the difference between seeing a soul or just its body or clothing. And when my mind goes off on a detour and turns away from its happy destination, I whistle it back on track with a happy song and it returns with its arm around a friend. It returns with its arm around a lost waif. It returns with its arm around a villain. It returns with its arm around a secret stowaway and we pass through the doorway together. The difference between seeing and not seeing, the golden pathway that winds through the clouds, is the difference between treasuring invisible beauty or just the trappings of the world. And when my heart goes off on a detour and its wellies get stuck in the mud, I whistle it back on track with a happy song and it returns with its arm around a friend. It returns with its arm around an angel. It returns with its arm around a secret lover. It returns with its arm around a lost part of me. And we take the golden pathway together. In some ways, a bit similar this one. Just beyond the edge of my vision. Just beyond the edge of my vision, you are walking by my side. I walk with my arms swinging and sometimes find your hand in mine. I am carrying a light. Start again. I am carrying a candle and you are carrying a light. And when our lights merge, nothing shines so bright. Just beyond the edge of my vision, I see things with imagination. And at the forefront of my heart, I imagine heaven is waiting. When I look at the blue sky, I don't see what's dancing on the grass. When I look at the grass, I don't see what's flying in the sky. I don't see that bird on your shoulder, and I don't see you carrying the light. But when our lights merge, nothing shines so bright. Got a prop for the next poem. Okay, so I don't know which of you are, are chess players, but uh, I am. I'm a chess player. And this one here is a knight, yeah, or a horse, and it moves in an interesting way. It sort of jumps and lands to the side slightly. Yeah. And we have the bishop. The bishop goes diagonally. The rook or the castle goes in straight lines, horizontally or vertically, a bit like castle walls. The pawn, when it reaches the end of the board, so it goes, when it reaches the end of the board, can transform into a queen. And the king just is protected. So here we are. It's called the chess game. 
the chess game. Sometimes my heart leaps up and lands a bit to the side, like a knight on a chessboard. And sometimes I glide about like a bishop or a rook. Sometimes I stand about like the king, while everyone else busies themselves around me. And sometimes I'm like a pawn, with one square left to go to the end of the board where I can transform. Will you play a game of chess with me? Will it matter which one of us wins? Will we transform like a pawn when we reach the end? Sometimes my heart leaps up and lands a bit to the side, like a child jumping from the chair to the sofa. Sometimes I want to run free, and sometimes I want to stand still like a chess piece. Thank you for the game. Thank you for playing chess with me. I think we both transformed in the end, like a pawn reaching the end of the board. Mm. That depends partly on the sunshine. Are you hiding in the early morning mist, and will I see your smile of love? I suppose that depends mostly on love, and partly on the sunshine. When nighttime leaves feathers of frost upon my bathroom window, whether you see them depends on when you wake up, and on the sunshine. Where we go depends on where we walk. And that depends partly on the sunshine. How we love depends on how we talk and partly on the sunshine. I found a feather and put it in my hat in the hope that you would give me a smile of love. I suppose smiles like that depends mostly on love and partly on the sunshine. So this one is called To My Invisible Sweetheart. To My Invisible Sweetheart. Since you live in the world of joy, I had to become joyful myself to see or hear even a hint of you. So I made myself joyful and I gradually started to see your smile and to hear your sing-song voice. And as we walked through the trees, I occasionally felt your arm in mine, and I gradually saw a bit more of you. And when the animals drew near to you, they also became less wary of me. Since you live in the world of love, I had to become loving myself to share even a short time with you. So I made myself loving, and I gradually began to make your world my own, and to share more of your company. Okay. Beautiful thoughts. I think this, is, this goes well in the setting, this poem, the setting. Beautiful thoughts. Every day I open my door to all the beautiful thoughts that are out there in the garden. Every day I open my windows and welcome beautiful thoughts into my house. When limiting thoughts are swirling around, I pull out the plug in the bath. When an anxious thought is buzzing about, I open a window and let it fly out. When a lovely thought is given to me, I look around for a vase. I love to display and look after beautiful thoughts in my house. Have you a vase to put this flower? Have you a place for this house plant? Are you able and willing to look after beautiful thoughts today in your beautiful house?
every day I fall in love with you. Who will love you today? My heart moves towards the ones who love you. Who will we fall in love with today? Every day I fall in love with you. A butterfly led me to a flower, then disappeared behind a rose bush. I went looking for it, and there you were, standing on the lawn. Who will listen to your singing? My heart moves towards the ones who listen to you. Who will you sing through today? Every day I fall in love with you. A tiny moth fluttered before my eyes scattering light before me. I looked behind that light and you were there again, standing in your light-filled garden. Who will you speak through today? My heart moves towards the ones you speak through. Who will we fall in love with today? Every day I fall in love with you. A little dance on the sand. Sometimes I imagine walking in your shoes. So I kick mine off and walk bare feet because I'm sure that's how you walk upon the beach. Then I feel a touch of a hand. So I stop and turn to share a little dance on the sand. Sometimes I imagine love walking towards me and then I feel a touch of a hand. So I stop and turn to share a little dance on the sand. Sometimes I imagine looking through your eyes. So I close my eyes and dream because I know it's night where you are and you might well be asleep, feeling a touch of a hand, then stopping and turning to share a little dance on the sand. So the next one is called Clouds of Sweet Chestnut Pollen. And I, I like the idea that something that's invisible becomes visible. And in nature, we have sweet chestnut pollen, and it's mostly not visible, unless you get the lighting right. Uh, all these pollen is not usually visible. And um, so it just has the theme of sweet chestnut pollen. Clouds of sweet chestnut pollen. Do you remember when that tiny bump, which was to be our baby, first became visible? I vaguely remember the clothes you were wearing, but most of my memories are like clouds of sweet chestnut pollen. Clouds of sweet chestnut pollen are often too fine to be seen, but soon after the catkins fall, sweet chestnuts start growing. My thoughts are with you and your family, are words we give to the bereaved. We hope that our hugs bring comfort, but most of our prayers are like clouds of sweet chestnut pollen. Clouds of sweet chestnut pollen are often too fine to be seen, but soon after the catkins fall, sweet chestnuts start growing. I'll spend more time with my family, our words politicians give when they resign. Their words speak of what we cherish, but most of their pronouncements are like clouds of sweet chestnut pollen. Clouds of sweet chestnut pollen are often too fine to be seen, but soon after the catkins fall, sweet chestnuts start growing. Okay. Now, this one is celebrating humanity in contrast to the robot 
or artificial intelligence. You know, what is human and what is life? You know? And uh, it's called a butterfly flight away. Don't worry if you have butterflies in your stomach. They might just be a sign that you are human and have flowers to give. Butterflies in your stomach, like love in your heart, are things that robots don't have. Human frailty belies beautiful strength and wonderful power, and both are just a butterfly flight away. Robots can sing and dance and make poetry using facial expressions, body language and disco beats. And robots can mimic and interfere with butterflies. But they don't have butterflies in their stomachs. And they don't have butterflies in their hearts. And they can't open their hands to welcome butterflies from heaven. And they can't send butterflies of love. So those are the ten poems that I'm very, I'm very happy to have chosen. I've just got two more, and then the, which are re very recent, I, and then that'll be it. So just two more. Um, this is a smile can do magic. <clears throat> a smile can do magic. <clears throat> a smile can do magic, and so can a word and a tone of voice. A smile can make clenched hands open and hunch, hunched shoulders drop. A kiss can make a face blush the colour of a rose. And a blown kiss can start a gale which fills the sails of your boat. Can you feel a tingle running up and down your spine? Is it anything to do with my fingers? Or was it my smile? When things aren't going perfectly, I raise an eyebrow and ask joy and courage to make my backbone strong and I become like an opera singer or Spanish dancer, making great gestures to give my heart some room. A smile can do miracles when it comes from a place of love. A smile can make folded arms unfold and feet want to dance. A kiss can turn a man into an opera singer, and a blown kiss can turn a woman into a Spanish dancer. Can you feel a tingle running up and down your spine? Is it anything to do with love? What exactly brought your smile? So I, I try and write a poem a day. <clears throat> it doesn't always work. I get up in the morning and I write a poem. And this morning I wrote this poem. I sort of started it a bit yesterday, so. But this is the one I came up with. <clears throat> and it's called A Concert of Birds. Would you like to sit with me and listen to a concert of birds while the squirrels heckle and the leaves offer their applause? I will look into your eyes as the squirrels chatter in rhyme and the birds fly through the branches in the dappled light of our smiles. Would you like to walk with me through the concert hall? We can get up on the stage and sing, both quietly and out loud. Would you like to return with me to our bench in the concert hall? and listen to the second half of our concert of birds. I will look into your eyes and listen through your ears, and then nature and love can decide for us what we see and hear. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>